All right, he is the former national security advisor under President Trump and author of the new book. I'm sure you've heard about it, The Room Where It Happened, a White House memoir. John Bolton from Washington, D.C. Ambassador, thank you for being here or there. And uh, I know you have a big book out. I'm going to start with something you said in it. You're talking about the virus. You said Trump didn't want to hear warnings about the virus because he didn't want to hear bad things about President Xi of China that could affect the fantastic trade deal <clears throat> he was working on. Are you saying he botched the coronavirus response because he was protecting China? Well, I think it's uh, that's very substantially the case. I think in the critical early months, January, February, maybe even before that, uh, there was an empty chair in the Oval Office. The experts around our government on the NSC staff and the Centers for Disease Control and elsewhere were, were raising the red flag. President did not want to be bothered with it. He didn't want to hear about the cover-up, the outright deception that China was engaged in in terms of the extent and the nature of the virus. And he particularly didn't want to hear anything that could foreshadow trouble for the American economy because of the disease that might upset his path to re-election. So there's a long list, and I won't repeat them all, but people can find it in uh, online and in newspapers of statements Trump made, senior officials made, saying the virus is not a threat, we've got it under control, uh, there won't be any impact. And, and that cost us a lot of time, and uh, earlier steps uh, could well have mitigated the effect of the disease substantially. Okay, staying with China for a, a minute here. Uh, Twitter last week purged 174,000 accounts, fake accounts, from the Chinese government. Um, and, of course, we know from the last election and what all our intelligence agencies told us, that Russia uh, was playing mischief, not only with social media, but also trying to directly hack into our election system. Um, what did you, as national security advisor, do to protect us from, happening, from this happening again? Well, first, let me say, I think it's very clear that Russia and perhaps others did interfere in the 2016 election. Uh, I said before I joined the White House, I considered that to be an act of war against the Constitution, and I feel even more strongly today about it than I did then. Russia has been joined in the past couple of years by China, Iran, North Korea, probably others. Vice President Pence gave an important speech about China's effort, which focuses not simply on interfering in the elections, although that's obviously uh, very disturbing, but on broader efforts to affect American public opinion. What we found uh, uh, in, in uh, looking at our possible responses was that the U.S. government was bound up by a series of procedural rules, I won't get into the details, that made it very hard for the United States to conduct offensive cyber operations. My view, and I think the view widely shared in the government, was that the best defense against Russian attacks or Chinese attacks or anybody's attacks was to have our own offensive capability so that we could impose costs on those who tried to interfere with us to the point where we could create structures of deterrence so that in Moscow and Beijing, they would say it costs us too much uh, to interfere in American elections, we're going to back off. That battle goes on. Let there be no mistake. I think there are efforts to interfere even now in the election. And I think really what our adversaries want to do is disrupt America's institutions, so mistrust among the American people. What we focus on, are they backing Trump? Are they backing somebody else? Uh, it's really the larger attack on our entire political system uh, I think we should be looking at.